some food, and then we're going to have another great presentation by Paul Savage, who's going to talk one? to us about Skywarn. Off, so off, off, off. So, I don't know if there's an introvert anywhere, but if we can find one, we'll have a forum. If not, who knows what will happen? And maybe you can get the lights off. Yeah, I prefer the lights off because I'm going to be talking about introverts, and as a basic introvert, I'm a shy person. And uh, frankly, I like being in the background, and if the lights are off, it might be even more compelling of a discussion. Um, how do I turn advance the slides again, Doug? Okay, at the PC. Oh, at the PC. Aha. Uh -huh. And I can see, well, no. So anyway, I guess I'll get up here to the front. Thank you so much. And if you'd advance the slide one, that'd be great. Um, but maybe this hobby isn't an, inter an introvert's hobby. Maybe it is an extrovert's hobby. What w I'd like to do in the roughly 20 minutes or so I have, other than maybe not walk around too much so Jacek has such a issue catching up with me, is to uh, just offer you some thoughts of uh, new hams in the in the crowd. You know, what do you do when you get on the radio and all of a sudden the guy on the other end starts asking you another a bunch of questions? And if you have a thought of introvert versus extrovert, it might give you some uh, some mechanisms to carry on conversations. Next slide, if I could. So if you were to go talk to the psychologists in the in the world, they'd come back or uh, they would come back and say, well, introverts are basically shy, recalcitrant, uh, appear. Uh, reserved. Uh, some people say they're standoffish. Uh, extroverts, in in comparison, are those obnoxiously loud people that have to butt into every conversation that exists. And so you're beginning to get a sense of, I think I'm a very strong introvert in an extrovert's world. Well, I think introverts are more concerned about the ideas and I think uh, extroverts really aren't concerned with anything about ideas. They just want to have externalization. Uh, an extrovert loves to have a new suit. I could live for 40 years working in the government with seven suits. That many. Um, I actually prefer to spend time alone. I can sit and uh, read a book for four or five hours at a time. Uh, Extroverts, I think uh, those of you that know any or are of some, uh, they abhor silent time. They need to be out doing things and touching and, and moving around and being parts of things. Um, this is one that you really know if you're an introvert or an extrovert. An introvert, frankly, is physically exhausted after some kind of a social event. They literally are fundamentally tired. I had a lunch meeting today in Gaithersburg and got home and took a nap. I just could not. It was just too much. Extroverts thrive on being in the center of conversations, and they become invigorated inside of these kinds of conversations. They're obnoxious people, by the way. <laughs> but I, I think the tagline at the bottom really describes introverts and extroverts. Uh, extroverts sparkle externally. And introverts glow. Next slide, if I could. Uh, maybe people think you're uh, reserved or shy or not paying attention, as oftentimes people tell me I'm, I'm not paying attention. But I'm actually listening. And our hobby is about listening. Remember the exam, uh, your early exams? Uh, the first thing you were supposed to do is listen, listen, listen. That's an extrovert's expertise. Next slide. Well, let's keep on these slides. Uh, introverts have few friends. Extroverts have a gazillion friends, none of which they like. Um, introverts will talk about themselves to other people, but they've got to make sure they know who they're talking to, and they're not going to tell them much until they become part of their club. I had two daughters, or my wife and I have two daughters. It's not had. We do have them still. Uh, somehow they made it through pu puberty and and uh, the teen years, and they're now both moms. They're scary. They're better moms than <laughs> we ever gave them credit to. One was an absolute intro ex introvert. 
she could only have one friend at a time. And in fact, at one point when we moved from, uh, I think it was California to Montana, said, Dad, I only had one friend. I'm only going to have one friend. Why are we moving to Montana? My friend is being left behind. The other uh, daughter, uh, who is the uh, older daughter, is the, is the extrovert in the family, and, and truly in the whole family. And uh, she will go into a high school classroom and have 10 friends by the end of the first day. She thrived on the, the military moves we did. Um, introverts think twice before they speak. Extroverts, I don't think, ever think. They just speak. Next slide, if I could. There was a little bit of a joke there, by the way. I do like extroverts. They're good people. Uh, this is a kind of an interesting slide of pur I purloined off the web. Uh, essentially, in the general population in the United States, about half the people are introverts and half the people are extroverts. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, uh, if you look at that uh, and if you do some more reading in the literature, you'll find out that actually about 30% uh, of... Uh, uh, 30 percent or so, or uh, 30 to 40 percent or so of the population are introverts, but there is a group of people, maybe about 20 percent or so, that are ambivalent, is the term in the uh, in the literature. Uh, they're introverts when they need to be introverts, and extroverts when they need to be extroverts. And in fact, that that is, I think, if you will, the bottom line of this conversation. Introverts can exist in an extrovert world. Extroverts can actually behave themselves and not be obnoxious and loud and not listening and actually make some meaningful conversations as long as we introverts know how to channel their, their exuberance and uh, uh, their sparkle. But here was the part of this chart that I really thought was interesting. First line supervisors, uh, supervisors as a whole, but first line supervisors in the green are inherently uh, more extrovert than the general population. So the, uh, looking at the right side of the chart, forget the numbers, you may not be able to read them, but in the general population about uh, whatever that number is, uh, Keith, what's the number of green on the top popu general population? Green, what that number? 15% of the population are uh, uh, extensively extrovert in the general population. But as you, uh, supervisors tend to be more so, there's more green there. And notice what happens to supervisors who turn into first-line managers just above the, uh, if you will, the initial uh, stage of being a supervisor. Now you're actually managing multiple supervisors. What happens to middle-line uh, uh, managers and then finally top executives? Uh, that actually matches what happened to me when I took my early Myers-Briggs type uh, indicator personality test. I was a very strong introvert. But as the government put me into more and more leadership positions and ultimately uh, senior leadership uh, environments, I had to be more of an extrovert. And I became a little bit more comfortable working outside of my confidence, but I'd still go home exhausted. Next slide if I could, Doug. Uh, I'm not going to go into this slide at all other than to say that uh, in the Myers-Briggs process of trying to type people, they type them into four groups. Uh, the groups can be, uh, uh, so four groups times uh, uh, four is there 16 particular personality characteristics. Uh, probably you've taken the Myers-Briggs test sometime or another. And so that first letter in your type, first of all, how many people took Myers-Briggs sometime? Most everybody. Uh, were you an introvert or an extrovert? Those that are extrovert, raise your hand. Ooh, not many. Those that were introvert, raise your hand. How about that? More. Uh, there was a supposition in some of the discussions going online as we were preparing this lecture that we would find that more ham radio operators are introverts and extroverts, and that's going to come up on a slide or two. Uh, but this goes a little bit further than just introvertism and extrovertism. This talks about how do you address problems and issues. And so next slide, if I could. If you take those same 16 categories, and again, the, the printing is way too small. Keith ca in the front row can't read the small print. But you can kind of see that, uh, even the big print. But, I, you know, I think everybody can see that there's a, you know, there's a letter down here, I, and there's a letter up here, E. And so the extroverts sit uh, over here, right, okay, 
and the extroverts sit over here, right? So there's a group of extroverts that think logically, and there's a group of extroverts that are basically thinking about the people and themselves as much as they are thinking about logical situations. Uh, people that are up here tend to be uh, uh, people that think in the future space. Uh, people in this part of the uh, chart are people that think in the here and the now. Uh, and so I actually started out in the first personality test I took when I went to Intermediate War College. Uh, they put me down in this category right here of inspector, which is reasonable. At the time I was teaching graduate school, so I really thought I'd be up here. But uh, no, my introvertism just drove me into this column right over here. And as I moved through my career, I ended up as an INTJ, as tested in using the formal testing process. I don't know what your personality types are, uh, but I already know that about more of you are introverts than extroverts, and that's really what I was interested in bringing out in this chart. There could be a whole lecture on this topic if someone was interested. Doug, if next slide if you would. Uh, in doing this presentation, I googled uh, introvert and a ham radio hobby or something along that line, and oh, Google didn't let me down. Here's a guy who wrote in something called Reddit, introvert comments about a hobby of fellow ham radio. And so it picked it up in the Google search. And here's a guy that says, I, don't, I know you're thinking, I've had a hard time at a party with a handful of people, let alone broadcasting to the world. What in the world was I doing getting into the ham radio uh, world? And this was about a, a 2000, about a 2008 post from what I can remember. And he basically goes on and says, let's face it, most hams are older, probably retired men. I love listening to people because I'm an introvert, he says in his, his article. And so I really don't mind being in this kind of demographic. I learned something from these people and I don't have much opportunity to say anything because they're just blasting away talking all the time. Not bad. Doug, next slide. Then he went on and says, well, but there's something you need to think about in this hobby. If you're on sideband or even in CW or uh, the digital modes, non-FT8 modes, you got to carry some kind of a conversation on. So how does an introvert carry a conversation on? Well, an introvert in this hobby carries a conversation on phone or CW or PSK, whatever, by having kind of a script. I mean, if you were ever to listen to me on the radio, I start out by saying, uh, you know, my name and my QTH and your signal strength report. The individual on the other end comes back and says the same thing, right? And then the next thing I do is I talk about either the weather or the radio. And I usually am the guy calling C, uh, I'm not the guy calling CQ. Uh, the other guy is. So he actually leads the conversation and I follow it. And after the third, uh, third time, uh, you know, I kind of follow this guy's advice that says, look, if I'm exhausted from the conversation of saying the weather is uh, nice in uh, Virginia and uh, I've got a ICOM 7300 running barefoot, uh, I can stop the conversation. I can say thanks. Bye. Some of those conversations have turned into half hour and 45 minute conversations. But it starts out with a script and then it ad libs from there on out. Um, but these are my small, stock, uh, small talk skills. And I can remember a supervisor somewhere in the mid 80s telling me that, you know, you're a great, uh, you're a great engineer, but my problem is all your answers are yes, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I can't ever get a conversation out of you. And uh, nowadays I have a vocabulary that's bigger than yes and no. Those are really good. They always survive in the family unit to saying yes to my wife and no to my kids. <laughs> but comma, uh, you know, it has actually improved my uh, small skill, uh, small talk skills, both in the social environment and the work environment. Uh, but uh, ham radio has actually helped this guy a lot. And so I thought that was pretty meaningful. There I cut some stuff out just because I wanted to keep this to two slides. But the point is, and this in some ways was uh, predicated on a conversation that I had with some of the new hams that says, what do you do once you said, say what the, what the uh, signal strength of the report is, my QTH? And we got on to, here's, here's four or five different topic areas. And have a script. 
and, you know, don't read it. Well, presumably don't read it, but if you have to read it, feel like you need to read it. Next slide. Uh, oops, I did some, uh, some other things. He talked a little bit about listening, and he said, listen, listen, listen. That's something that's in the, uh, in the guidebook that FCC puts out. But it's not like eavesdropping. You're not eavesdropping on these guys. These guys know that they're being listened to by a whole bunch of other people. Um, and I think what will happen in these, again, uh, this is somewhat aimed to the new hams in the crowd. You will find your small, stock, uh, small talk skills grow, your repertoire of topics raise. You will find that uh, there are now ham radio operators out there you've talked to three and four times. And when you hear them on the band, you recognize them. Uh, they're welcoming you and want you to come back and have another conversation with them. There's a guy up at Princeton, retired pharmacologist. Uh, we're probably in chapter three of his textbook at this point. And I'm learning a whole lot about pharmacology. He doesn't give very much for me because I'm a yes, no, and, and uh, maybe type of guy. But uh, I've sort of learned a lot from him. And actually, we have talked about a topic that I have great interest in, which is uh, radio communications interference by large commercial wind turbine projects. And as you know, this nation, particularly you go out in the Midwestern part of the United States, there's just thousands of wind turbines. And those wind turbines may be great from an energy point of view, but they can play havoc to ground wave propagation. Next slide. So here's my own personal idea of introverts and extroverts, if you've never thought about this. Introverts start out as shortwave listeners. They tend to lurk. This is a term you'll see in the hobby. Uh, they lurk in various QSOs. I never respond to a CQ the first time I hear it. I listen to the CQ. I hear somebody come back to him. I know his name is Mel. I know he's in Melbourne, Florida, and that he's got a uh, KX3 uh, transmitter, and he's running 60 million watts or something like that. Okay, I know all that before I ever call him uh, on his next CQ. I lurk. Um, I seldom call CQ. It is, a, it is not something that's in my vocabulary. But I will respond to somebody in CQ all the time, call him CQ all the time. I am comfortable with FT8. I actually have a race with my wife on how many FT8 contacts I can get in the time that she plays one game of solitaire, solitary on, the, on her computer. Uh, I seldom join nets. Uh, I'm not a regular net person. There are nets every night of the week on every band that's out there. Some nets are really cool if you're looking for a particular state. Uh, there is a, a net on uh, 7.192 every night of the week where everybody comes in and all they do is uh, they share. If you need a QSO from the state of Montana, uh, they'll probably have somebody from Montana on. You say you want to talk to Montana, and they get the guy in Montana that, uh, if you will, link up with you. And so there's a net for every topic out there. On 14300 in the afternoon, there's a maritime mobile net. If you ever want to hear ships at sea or, frankly, airplanes that are aeronautical mobile, uh, that's a place to go. These nets are published out there. I'm not a net person. I am absolutely exhausted when I play radio. These extrovert dudes, hey, they would never listen to broadcast uh, radio. I mean, there are some really cool broadcast radio stations in about the five to 600 megahertz range. You know, they don't show up on your waterfall, but in fact, they're out there. And there's some interesting ones out there. I don't necessarily believe with their religion, but that's okay. Uh, almost always, they call CQ. They seldom even start out with asking, is this band occupied? They just start with their CQ and last out. Uh, they love sideband and they love drag chewing and that's great. There are people out there that do that. Um, they'll join and, and uh, return oftentimes to a net and they are just absolutely invigorated at the end of the day of playing radio. Doug. So my last slide, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope there's some conversation. We have a few minutes, I suspect, uh, before we have to quit, but uh, introverts are awesome. They just keep it to themselves. And I thank you very much for your time. <laughs> but how about, so how about uh, any comments or questions? Uh, this was aimed primarily at the young uh, new hams. Uh, just a show of hands here. How many people have been a ham less than two years? Okay. 
We got a teenager back here with a question. Uh, just a comment um, about uh, introverts and ham radio. I think the fact that you're not talking face to face with someone might uh, make it easier for people. Absolutely. Yep, yep. and I can do it in my PJs. No. Oh, I didn't want to know that. Question here from another teenager. And <clears throat> not a question, but an observation that um, I think you're right, Mike. Um, you start out maybe as an introvert, depending on family and, and genetics, I guess. And I have a twin brother, not identical, but he was much more of an extrovert than I was. It wasn't until I was probably a senior in high school or started to go to college that I began to come out of that shell a little bit. But then the other thing... And so in aging life, he became an introvert? No, the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Just the reverse a little bit. But I found that um, as I was in the work environment and progressed, uh, as you suggested, in, in level, uh, it required more presentations, talking to your people, and... Uh, being more of an extro extrovert, and I found out that it really didn't hurt that much, you know, and uh, so it was an improvement. But uh, you're right about the radio, and, you know, my experience still generally tend to be an introvert, but uh, have learned when necessary to be more of an extrovert. Yeah, I think we, particularly those who have been in the management side of the world, have been, I think, if you were to be in a group of, say, you know, penciled uh, slide rule driving engineers which I spent half of my career as such. You know, we tend to be more introverts just because of our general nature. Uh, I think we're Brendan. probably done, Bill, or do you see any more questions out well, there? Well, I don't see any more out here. Any more questions, comments, thoughts, criticisms? Do people just want to talk, 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 because you're extroverts? Most of you are introverts, so you probably want, to sh want me to shut up. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to uh, going to start off our business meeting.